this video, I'd like to go over some basic strategies to make your job as a pump operator easier. Especially at those fires where there's lots happening and it's easy to get overwhelmed. In the past, many pump operators have used this method to keep track of what's going on with their pump. It's very simple, which is great, but most operators had to expand this system when things really got going. With multiple hose lines going to multiple locations and teams, this system simply doesn't keep up. Another shortfall of this system is that it assumes that every hydrant has 6,800 liters per minute available to you. This simply isn't the case in the real world. I've personally seen hydrants that deliver less than 2,000 liters a minute, even with twinned lines, and hydrants that deliver in excess of 12,000 liters a minute. There are many variables that have to line up in order for the 6,800 liters per minute to work, such as the size of the water main, the construction of the flange inside the hydrant, the diameter of the hydrant port, the number of lengths of hose we have laid between the hydrant and our intake port, and elevation gain or loss. So, as I'm sure you can understand, if you always assume you'll have 6,800 liters, you'll most likely end up with an inaccurate number. Because of this, I'd like to see this method scrapped in favor of a more comprehensive, yet still simple, method of accounting for your pump. Here's a quick look at the system. In this chart, which I like to have directly above the pump panel, we have which outlet the hose is connected to, what size hose we're using, which nozzle, who is using it and where they are, the pressure the hose is set to, the flow in liters per minute, the total flow of all nozzles in action, and the predicted flow underneath that. In addition to this, we have two more columns to help you calculate how much additional water you have available from the hydrant. And they are the intake gauge pressure and the percent drop. This is a quick reference chart to explain the 25% rule, so you don't have to have it memorized. And this chart, which I like to post on a side window, shows what tools and equipment have been taken off your truck, who is using them, and where they are. This is all information that is quick and easy to keep track of, and it will make your job easier. It keeps all of the important information organized and in a standard fashion, so that when things need to be changed or adjusted, you know which line, where it is, and who's on it. It also makes shift change easier if another pump operator is coming in to take over your pump. All it takes is a quick review of your charts for them to know what's happening. It's designed so there's less to remember because the chart prompts you which pieces of information to keep track of. Also, if things are happening quickly and you don't get all this written down as it happens, you can always come back and catch up later. It still works. Let's take a quick look at the 25% rule chart which has expanded a little beyond what most of us were originally taught. To start, we make sure that we mark our intake gauge right after we bring on a hydrant. We'd like to have a static pressure if possible, but if not, that's just fine. We mark it with whatever is flowing when we remember. When we start flowing water to another line, we record the new intake gauge pressure. We calculate the percent drop, which is the drop in KPA divided by the original intake pressure. We then reference this chart and see where it falls. If it's in the 0 to 10% column, it means that we have three times the volume we are currently flowing in addition to what we are currently flowing. If it's in the 11 to 15% column, we have two times the water. If it's in the 16 to 25% category, we have the same amount available. And if it's more than 25%, then we have more water available, but less than what is currently flowing as long as the intake gauge is still above 150 kPa. You'll have to understand that this won't give you a precise number, but it will give you a rough idea about what's left. Let's look at some examples. First off, we bring in the hydrant. Next, we mark the compound gauge. And put a mark at 150 to remind us not to drop below. We pull the lever to charge the line, check to see how much of a drop there was. Then we fill out our chart. This was outlet number two. It's a 44 mil hose. The nozzle is not a Sabre jet, but we'll call it one. It's being used for fire attack, entering on the alpha side, moving toward the Charlie side. The pressure is 620, the flow is 475, total flow is 475 liters a minute. Compound is still at 600, so there's a 0% drop. We pull the lever to charge the next line. 65 safety jet. Check the compound gauge, it's dropped to 590. That's right, 590. This was outlet number three. It's a 65 hose, the nozzle's a saber jet. It's being used by the backup team. And yes, I realize that U looks like an A. 
The pressure is 620. The flow is 800 liters a minute. The compound gauge is at 590. Quick calculation. There was a 10 kPa drop on the compound gauge divided by 600 is 1.6. We'll round that up to 2 to make it easy. Check the chart. It's in the 0 to 10 range. We add up our total flow, which is 1275. Multiply 1275 times 3, plus the 1275 we're already flowing, and we get 5100 liters per minute predicted flow. We pull the lever to charge the next line, which is a 65 blitz fire. Check the compound gauge again, it's down to 550. Outlet number one, 65 mil hose. It's a blitz fire. And it's assigned to cover the exposure on the Bravo side. The pressure is set to 1750, and it's flowing 1800 liters a minute. The compound gauge is now at 550 kPa. Add up the total flow, and it's now at 3,075. The compound drop is now at 50 kPa, divided by 600, and we get 8.3. Let's round that off to 8. We're still in the 0 to 10 zone, so let's do another calculation update. 3,075 times 3 plus the 3,075 we're already flowing, and we get 12,300 liters per minute predicted flow. Lots of water available. Let's open the deck gun. Check the compound, it's now at 270. This is the deck gun. There's no hose attached. It's a crossfire nozzle. It's being used for fire attack from the alpha side. The pressure is at 620 and the flow is 4700 liters a minute. The compound is at 270. That's a 330 kPa drop. 330 divided by 600 is 55 percent. We'll update the total flow to 7775. Our drop is 55%. On the chart, we're above 25%. In that example, the hydrant had lots of water available. All of the variables seemed to line up to give us a solid water supply. Let's run through another one and see what happens. Open the intake valve. Mark the gauge at 550 and 150. Pull the lever to charge the 44 Sabre Jet. Mark the gauge. This dropped down to 530. Discharge number two, 44 mil hose. It's a Sabre Jet again. Assigned to fire attack. Going to the second floor, Bravo side. Pressure is 620. Flow is 475. Total flow is 475. Compound gauge is 530. The drop is 20 divided by 550 is 3.6. We'll round that off to 4. The chart shows between 0 and 10, so we multiply our flow of 475 by 3 and add the 475 we're currently flowing, and we get 1900 liters per minute predicted flow. Pull the next line. It's a 65 blitz fire. The compound is dropped to 220. Outlet number three. Hose is 65. It's a blitz fire. Assigned to exposure on the delta side. Pressure is 1750, flowing 1800 liters a minute. 
compound is now at 220 kPa. The drop is 330 divided by 550 gives us 60 percent. We add 475 and 1800 and our total flow is 2275. Check the chart, we're above 25 percent. As you can see, with all of this laid out at your pump panel before the fire hits, you are already well prepared to keep track of your pump. The expanded 25% rule is helpful because it assists you with being a little more accurate in predicting how much water is available. It's important to remember to mark your compound gauge when you bring on the hydrant, but if you didn't, then just mark it from wherever you are and do your calculations from there. Accuracy goes down a little, but it still works. You only need to have one documented change in flow and pressure to figure out what you have left. And always remember to keep a minimum of 150 kPa on your compound gauge. Thanks for watching.